Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, shortly I will be introducing a bill which will give municipalities the right to approve the location of landfills within their borders. This is about respect for municipalities and their residents. Today, municipal governments can decide where Tim Hortons should go, but they can't decide where something as, as significant as a landfill is located. That doesn't make sense. Currently, only the Ministry of Environment approves new landfill. Municipalities don't have a real say despite the significant impact on their communities. If passed, this bill will ensure landfills only go ahead when waste companies can earn community approval. Mr. Speaker, there is support for this across Ontario. Last fall, the Mayor of Ingersoll came to Queen's Park to request this authority, and I want to thank him uh, for that, and he's in the gallery today. Now nearly 30 municipalities have passed resolutions of support. A further 150 municipal leaders have signed petitions demanding the right and are in the process of passing similar motions in their own councils. A recent poll found that almost 80 per cent of Ontarians believe that cities and towns should have the right or authority to approve new landfill sites. Any community outside the 905 to the, to the provincial border is a potential site for future megadumps, and under current legislation, they have no say. We want to change that. Ontarians are tired of governments forcing everything from wind farms to landfill sites down their throats. It's time to recognize the authority and accountability of municipal governments in meeting the needs of their residents. And I thank you very much for the opportunity to make this statement, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize family physician Dr. Sharad Rai, president of the London District Academy of Medicine and a London West constituent. Dr. Rai is on the front lines of the health care crisis in my community. At his office at the Hyde Park Medical and Walk-In Clinic, Dr. Rai sees daily the effect of lack of access to primary care as more and more Londoners seek walk-in treatment because they can't find a family doctor or nurse practitioner. He hears regularly regularly about the impact of chronic underfunding on our health care system, and he is doing something about it. Last April, on behalf of the London District Academy of Medicine, he organized a patient health care forum to provide an opportunity for patients and their loved ones to share their health care experiences. The painful stories that were told about people's inability to access care, their frustration navigating the health care system, their medical conditions that got worse instead of better, highlighted the failure of our health care system to respond to Londoners' health care needs. The stories also revealed the serious consequences of this failure in increased patient suffering and in much higher health care costs down the road. I am grateful that physicians like Dr. Rye are taking action. Another forum is being organized by the London District Academy of Medicine on Thursday, April 12th, and I hope that many Londoners will attend. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, my motion passed to officially declare March 1st as Professional Engineers Day in Ontario. Thank, thank you to all the members of this House and to the professional engineers across this province who showed up in support. I am very pleased to say that Ontario is the, is the very first jurisdiction in Canada to formally recognize the day, a day for engineers. Here, here. To, become, to become a professional engineer in Ontario, you must be a licensed professional engineer and be registered with the PEO. This designation represents the high standards for engineering knowledge, experience, and professionalism in the country. Mm -hmm. How we as Ontarians live, travel, learn, and experience the world is made possible by expertise of professional engineers. In my riding of Durham, engineers are the driving force behind many employers including Ontario Power Generation, Darlington Nuclear, and General Motors. There are also the very impressive Automotive, Automotive Center for Excellence, ACE at UOIT. ACE was developed in partnership with UOIT, General Motors of Canada, the Government of Ontario, and the Government of Canada, and the Partners for Advanced Co Collaborative Engineering Education. On Professional Engineers Day, I would like to sincerely thank all the engineers in my riding of Durham as well as across this great province for their hard work and countless trans contribution to their communities. Excellent. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Further statements? The member from Redford, Nipa St. Pembroke. Thank you, Speaker. Recently, I've been contacted by several local museums in my riding of Redford, Nipa St. Pembroke 
who reminded me that provincial funding for community museums has not increased in 10 years. And although our municipal partners have stepped up to the plate on many occasions, this decade-long free long freeze has severely restricted the ability of our museums, uh, our, the ability of museums to deal with increased demand and higher operating costs. As with so many other groups in the nonprofit sector, local museums have been doing more with less in recent years, but this is not sustainable. We know local museums play a vital role in keeping our history alive. Without our museums, who will preserve it? Learning about our history is one of the most culturally important things we can do. All this is put at risk if the provincial government continues to freeze their funding. Community museums are asking for an additional $5 million to the Community Museum Operating Grant. I think everyone in this chamber can agree that that would be money well spent. I stand with local museum staff, our municipal leaders, and every citizen who understands the importance of preserving history and call on the Minister of Finance to include this modest request in his upcoming budget. Local museums are a cornerstone of our rural communities. If they were to disappear, it would be devastating to our small towns and villages in Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke, and all across the province. I say to the Minister of Finance, don't let this happen. Further member statements? The member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise to call for a restoration of provincial funding for transit. About 20 years ago, the Progressive Conservatives cut the annual net operating grant for transit, had a huge impact here in Toronto. That funding was never restored by the Liberal government. As I go door to door talking to my constituents, I hear constant tales of unreliable transportation, of crowding, of subways, streetcars, and buses that just simply make life very difficult for people because they can never, ever sit down. And, Speaker, as I talk to people, there are many who used to take transit but now drive because it is too uncomfortable, too unreliable, too problematic. Speaker, that funding has to be restored. We need a system with good operations. We need it to be reliable. We need it to be comfortable so we don't drive residents away. We need as many people taking transit as possible. Speaker, in the next budget, the Treasurer, the Minister of Finance should be putting in the funds to restore transit funding in Toronto and across Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. I, it's my pleasure to rise in the House today to congratulate Tegan Harrison, a 10-year-old Irish dancer from my riding of Barrie. Oh. On March the 24th, Tegan will be heading to Glasgow, Scotland to compete in the World Irish Dancing Championships. Excellent. Tegan started learning Irish dance only five years ago, proving herself to be a talented and dedicated student. She was inspired to take up Irish dance by her mother, who herself had danced as a child. Tegan trains every evening in preparation for the big competition. In the opinion of her coach, Maureen Miller, it was clear that, quote, from the minute she walked in the door, she had a talent, and she picked it up really quickly and put the work in. Tegan is the youngest student ever from the Miller School of Dance to qualify for the World Championships. Wow. For those who are unfamiliar with Irish dance, it is a discipline that requires considerable athletic strength and technical skill. Dancers must have excellent posture, stand tall, on their toes, be flexible, have strong, and have strong core muscles. You must also be able to uh, calm your nerves when you go to a world championship mm -hmm. in everything. I, as, as my mother's maiden name was Shanahan, I wish uh, Tegan all the luck, and I hope she brings home the world championship to Barry. Thank you. Thank you. For your member, thanks, the member from Whitby, Oshawa. Speaker, and I rise this afternoon to honour Richard Reed, the 2018 recipient of the Ontario Library Association's Larry Moore Distinguished Service Award. Speaker, from a young age, Richard saw the impact that a library can have in a local community, as his mother was a public librarian. Today, Richard is the Durham District School Board's Innovative Education Facilitator for Libraries and provides support to 130 teacher librarians working in Durham Region Schools. 
Additionally, Speaker, Richard has spent several years volunteering with the Ontario Library Association, including assisting with the annual Forest of Reading Festival held in Toronto. And Speaker, as of this spring, he will also be the new Vice President of the Ontario Library Association. Speaker, libraries and librarians play an important role in educating Ontario students, and it's a privilege today to offer my sincere congratulations to Richard Reed, a passionate and strong voice speaker for increased library resources and for teacher librarians in Durham Region Schools. Congratulations for this accomplishment. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. Now, today I would like to acknowledge the death and passing of Annette Phillips, a beloved member of our Queen's Park family. 57 years ago, on a bright and cloudless morning in Coppercliff, Ontario, near Sudbury, Annette Phillips was born, and Ontario was just a little bit more special. In addition to her full and rich family life, the mother of Sean and Tori Phillips, and a very gr proud grandmother to Haley and Caden, Annette was a dedicated Queen's Park staffer. She joined the Queen's Park family team in about 2006 as a senior communications advisor working for the Honourable Monty Quinter. From there, she went on to become Director of Communications in the Ministry of Training, Colleges and Universities. And she also worked as Chief of Staff to Honourable Michael Couteau in the Ministry of Tourism, Cultural and Sports and Chief of Staff to the Honourable Glenn Murray in the Ministry of Infrastructure. Annette was also a constituent, and when she left Queen's Park, she took on the volunteer role as the president of the Beaches East York Riding Association before moving to Kingston to take up a position with St. Lawrence College. And I appreciated immensely her talent in helping our association excel. Annette envisaged a fair Ontario, and I'm proud to see as a government we are committed to staying on the same path for which she would be very, very proud. Speaker, I extend my deepest condolences to her family and friends and to all our colleagues who had the pleasure of working with her in her decade-long career here at Queen's Park. May she be in peace. Thank you. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to speak uh, further about uh, trade relations with the U.S. and Bill 194 in particular. Yesterday, we had a pretty fiery debate. I want to speak as passionately as I can right now in a calm and simple manner about the situation. I really do not believe that Bill 194 is the answer to resolve the strained relationships we're having with the U.S. And in fact, I feel that this antagonistic approach is only going to make matters worse. If we anger our friends to the south, we risk compromising trade relations so much further, and major economic drivers will fold throughout our province, city by city. And a community like mine of Sault Ste. Marie, with the industry being steel, Algoma Steel will fold. The answer is simple. If we look within each of our individual communities and we think about what our major businesses are that supply and drive economies south of the border, we can demonstrate to the leaders there with one phone call, if each one of us makes just one phone call to a leader south of the border that relies on our economies to keep their economies afloat, we can show the U.S that they need us as much as we need them. That's how we can resolve this issue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Time for member statements. I thank all of them for their statements. It's now time for reports by committees. The member from Toronto.